When looking at complexity, we are not looking at the algorithms, but rather the problems themselves. And here we actually concentrate on decision problems. Citing Wikipedia, these are problems that can be posed as a yes-no question on the input. And our input is apart from a logic program, sometimes an atom, sometimes a set of atoms. And we can then ask questions like, is the atom contained in some stable model of the logic program? Or is the set of atoms a stable model of the logic program? And actually, given that, that more or less ASP allows us to solve combinatorial search problems, a dominant class here is the problem of NP problems. These are problems that can be solved in non-deterministic polynomial time. Okay, so what are NP problems? Well, in a nutshell, it's pretty easy. You go and look for a solution and you present the solution to me. And no matter how much time you spend, the most important thing is I can verify your solution or your solution candidate, whether it is a solution in polynomial time, right? So for instance, timetabling, right? You give me a timetable and I can check whether this is a valid timetable, right? So are there no overlapping courses in a room? Does a teacher not teach at the same time in seven place? Anyway, you can verify this in polynomial time. Same with Sudoku, right? You solve a Sudoku and I can check whether it is whether the solution you came up with is actually a solution and satisfies all constraints, right? This is more or less the idea. You are the non-deterministic oracle that guesses a solution, gives it to me, and I can verify it in polynomial time. Okay, anyway, so what are the problems we are looking at? First of all, I will not now detail and go through all of this. Actually, there's literature and actually you can look through the slides and just look at, study them in a bit, a bit in detail. Let me just give you the, intu the intuitions and what, what actually these complexity results tell us. Well, first of all, if we take positive normal logic programs, we've actually seen that we have this TP operator and we can just iterate this guy to compute the single stable model, the consequences of a positive logic program. Hence, deciding whether, a given a positive logic program, whether a set of atoms is a stable model it, uh, uh, is very easy. You just launch the TP operator, you iter iterate it until you get a fixed point and then you check whether this is the result. And this can be done in polynomial time because you only have to go through, uh, through the in, over the input and, 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 and apply in the worst case all rules in the program. In the same way, if you want to check whether an atom is in, in here it's, there's just one, in the stable model of a positive logic program, you just launch the procedure and wait whether you get A or whether the procedure terminates and you haven't gotten A, right? That's it. And both, both questions can obviously be determined in polynomial time. Well, normal logic problems. Now we, 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 we lift the expressiveness, we allow neg negative body literals. Now things get more interesting, right? So first of all, uh, deciding whether a set of x is a stable model can be done in polynomial time. Well, you only have to evaluate the, the equality x equals the consequences of the program reduced by x. And this can be done by polynomial time. If, I, if you give me the x, I can check this easily. On the other hand, asking whether there is a stable model that contains an atom is NP-complete. Because someone has to find the stable model, right? And that makes it difficult. So if you give me uh, the stable model, I can check whether it contains X. I just have to look at all the atoms. If, a, if the atom is inside, great. So this is a typical NP-complete problem. Now, if we still have normal logic programs, but if we want to compute an optimal one, well, deciding whether a set is an optimal one is co-NP complete, because we have to make sure that there's no counterexample, right? There's no other stable model that is better, and then we have to go and, and, and have do an, an unsatisfiability check or solve an unsatisfiability problem. And uh, then the other question is deciding whether an atom belongs to an optimal stable model, there actually we can do polynomially many calls to an NP oracle and this amounts to the class delta pi 2. Because again, when you optimize the idea is you calculate a first stable model, where A may be inside or not, right? But uh, you then have to check that there is no better one. And, and this actually may need in the worst case, uh, ex uh, not polynomially many calls to an NP oracle. Good, and I think this gives you more or less an idea on the basic decision problems. You can, we can all take this one bump higher 
and to look and look at disjunctive logic programs. And actually here you see no matter we look at, whether we look at a positive disjunctive logic program or a disjunctive logic program, and again we did not study this in detail, the decision problems are all lifted by one. Because here what, what we face is a situation that if you give me a stable model of a disjunctive logic program, I, I have to solve an NP problem myself to verify that it actually is a stable model of the disjunctive logic program. And this actually makes things more complicated. And we actually gain another level of NP. So it's not only, uh, so the basic decision problem is not only NP, but also verifying that the solution is a stable model is an NP problem by itself. And this gives us two orthogonal sources of NP completeness. Okay, last but not least, uh, uh, what about a propositional formula? And again, we have not looked at this and propositional formulas can be translated down to disjunctive logic programs, and that's actually why they share the same complexity. But keep in mind there's one little, inter one interesting point here is, normally when we compare propositional logic and set, so finding a, a classical model of a propositional formula, with ASP we compare a propositional formula in set with a normal logic program in ASP. And actually both, both decision problems, so, so whether, they have, whether there is a classical model of the propositional formula or a stable model of the normal logic program, are in NP. But actually, if you take at both sides a propositional formula, then deciding whether a propositional formula has a classical model uh, is an NP-complete problem, while deciding whether a propositional formula has a stable model is a problem uh, that is NP to the power of NP. Right? So it, you need another NP oracle to verify that the model actually is stable. Good. So anyway, this was more or less um, um, a small landscape on, on, on complexity results. And there are uh, papers about this with much more detail. And again, I will not now detail all these decision problems, but I hope you got the flavor. Okay, so this is then what I want to tell you about complexity. Let's wrap up this section and say, well, actually, no, I don't want to say Auf Wiedersehen right now. I first want to sum up and give you a summary.